Today, I'm just going to show you a really simple way to improve your basics instantly. And I'm just going to show you three things. These are problems which seem to exist all over the place. Very simple problem. Remember that the Kihon, we do 30 basics in Kyokushin. And those 30 basics, they give you a really good workout. They, they work out every muscle in the body and they work the different planes. You're working sideways, forward, back, scapular retraction, retraction uh, your hip flexors, everything. You've got it all covered in the 30 basics. But you need to do the basics correctly because uh, as a simple illustration, when you do the side kick, you're kicking in a certain angle. Side kick. Like that. When I do the back kick, I kick at another angle. But often what you see, they'll do the side kick, and to do a back kick, they'll turn and do a side kick to the back. There's nothing wrong with that if it works. Just remember, it's not a back kick, and you're not working the muscles, you're not working the hip flexors, stretching the hip flexors, working the glutes, working the spinal muscles to keep the knees contracted so it's like a horse kick straight back, where it's coming straight back there, as opposed to the side kick. So a lot of people will do the side kick, and for a back kick, they'll simply turn and do the back kick. That's just an illustration of what we mean. We do the 30 basics, but if you're going to do them correctly, they have to be done in a very specific way. Anyway, so there are three things that I want to illustrate that make a difference. Now, the first thing is the head. As Mitch does the techniques, he has to make sure that the head stays exactly still. Like that. So the body works around the spine. The incorrect way to do it is where the head turns and moves. And it feels good, but even in a real fight, if I wanted to load power in my right hand, I can't allow my weight to go to my left leg. There's no power in it. What I need to do is learn how to sit down on the right so that the weight stays in the right or the right. Now, if you look at me when I do that, what happens is rather than the weight going to the left, and you see how my head moves, what happens is the head essentially stays where it is. That's where it should be. So when you do Kihon, what you're doing is you're not allowing your head to move, nor are you allowing the head to turn. Sometimes you think that it's still, but it's turning slightly. Your head has to be exactly where it is every time you punch. Now, a good way to drill that is I keep my head square and I put my arms out and I slowly turn and you realize actually what you're doing is relatively you're doing that because the shoulders are moving around but I have to keep my head straight. Now it actually takes, look, if I turn, if I keep my head there and straighten my shoulders now, you see how I go there. My, shoulders, my, my head's turned. So it's actually a trained condition to be able to move your body without your head moving. Boom, boom. See, like that. So your head stays exactly where it is as you move. We call this dominant head position. It's a term that I borrow from wrestling. Okay, and it's very important because in a situation, at any time, if I'm, if I'm in a grappling range, I want to make sure that my head is facing my opponent. Right now, I have dominant head position. Mitch's energy is going over there. So if he tries to push into me, it's very hard for him to do it unless he regains dominant head. Now, if he pushes into me, he has dominance. Okay? From a distance, what I want to make sure I do is develop the habit as, as Mitch moves slightly one way or the other. I don't want to think that I've tracked him by simply kind of looking at him at the corner of my eye. 
because he now has gone ahead and I don't. So if, if, when you talk about milliseconds, differences in response timing and, and, and your ability to um, detect things, here is not good enough. Okay, so that begins in basics. When you're doing basics, you have to be in the habit of keeping the head exactly still. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing we, that I want to add that will make a big difference to your basics. Us, Harry. Thanks for coming along. Us. Isaac. Us says I started to be old and I cannot show very strong Kiyo when I leave the class. So I told them that is a warm up, but I know Kiyo should be powerful. Well, as powerful as you can. More, more, more important, I think, is uh, smoothness and rhythm. That's what you're trying to develop. Because if they try to go too hard and too powerful without smoothness and rhythm, then they can never really develop true power later on. Okay, the second thing that I want to look at that I think can make a big difference instantly in your basics is relax the shoulder and retract the elbow to the spine. So watch Mitch again. He'll take that position. And if he throws punches, you... From the front position, you don't want to be able to see his back elbow. So if he pulls the elbow back wrongly, see how you can see the elbow there. And that'll happen when people don't retract from the elbow, but retract from the hand. So they go like this. They'll go. See, and they'll put the hand here. And it, it feels like it's strong and everything like that, but the reality is you're not getting that spinal rotation, which is what the, the whole movement is about. So what I want to do is, as I retract, I also used to say, you punch out from the fist, retract from the elbow, not the other way. Some people retract from the fist and punch and lead out from the elbow. Retract from the fist. This sort of thing. You see it everywhere. You retract from the elbow. And from the front, the elbow disappears. I don't want to be here. That's what happens if you place the hand. And you may think you're not doing it, but get someone to video you. Don't look at a mirror because that's misleading. Get someone to video you when you're not thinking of anything. But retract from the elbow, so there's a slight scapular retraction there. We used to, used to, when people ask how to do it correctly, you, you retract the scapula together there. And then when you do it, there's a scapular retraction every time you do the technique. So the second thing that will make a difference that matters in your kihon, retract from the elbow into the spine. Don't let your elbow be visible from the front in Kihon. Retract, not like this, but like that, okay? Um, yes, even there when you're doing your chiuke, it becomes very, very obvious because guys go, <laughs> Look at my elbow. <clears throat> Look at my elbow. Okay? Relax your shoulders. Retract from the elbow into the spine. One, two. See, the, you can hardly see the back hand. One, two. One, two. It's re and from the back, you can see how far my elbow. So it's almost a 90 degree angle. Okay, that's what you want to look for, for the second key point. The third key point is something you may or may not be, you may be aware of all of these, and that's good, but this isn't for people who already know. The third key point is don't have your hand falling down. I used to have the vision, the idea of having liquid silver, mercury, you know, quicksilver. 
you have mercury sitting on the back of the hand and if your hand is there the silver shouldn't drip off one side or the other but often what is very common is guys have a hand like this and have the hand falling down like that it means you haven't rotated the hand fully okay so the hand is perfectly horizontal as you do the key hand. perfectly horizontal not at an angle like that but horizontal it's these two the line of those two knuckles that will tell you if it's horizontal you can see that it's horizontal here obviously it falls down there if your fist is correct because the correct fist is made by squeezing the little finger in towards the thumb and tightening everything so even if this first part of the hand is square that second part will drop off i'm not talking about that i'm simply talking about direct on top here should be directly horizontal so combine those three the head doesn't move the elbow retracts through a relaxed shoulder into the spine and the third thing is the hand doesn't finish halfway or with the knuckle pointing out like that the hand finishes horizontal those three things alone will make a tremendous difference straight away in your basics now if you're not sure whether you're doing it or not simply video yourself doing basics okay and try to video yourself do a lot because if you video yourself doing just two or three you're still conscious of the fact that it's been videoed so your technique can change but if you put the video on and then let yourself roll through the basics and then go back later on and check some of it you'll see whether or not you're retracting the elbow correctly or whether or not your head is still so keep your head still retract through a relaxed shoulder into the spine with a, a scapular retraction and the third thing is make sure that the fist is horizontal not tipping that way or tipping that way anything to add i just think they're such great points and especially the um, retract from the elbow to the spine is such an important point because in today's world i know i say it ad nauseum we both do all the time everyone's probably sick of it but that scapular retraction opening up the chest as most people are so short and round through the chest pulling the elbow back um, around to the spine is so good for us posturally for our muscles for our joints it's just it's a beautiful thing um, in yeah. that regard alone i agree completely and also what you'll find is that the opposite to the full scapular retraction of the elbow pulling into the spine is things start to shorten up and then next thing you know you actually see people doing their basics like this okay and it, it just gets worse and worse so good point i think that scapular retraction is really key not just to the basics but to everything in life uh, and also uh, the head sitting on top of the spine like a toffee apple and it doesn't move yeah. the spine moves around but the head stays balanced and centered i think that's very very important and one last point sean about that the elbow from a grappling point of view if the elbow's out there's a you know there's uh, yeah, wrist lock. I mean, yeah. a elbow, Under shoulder, hooks. everything's yeah. there. Whereas if it's tucked in tight, it's not there. So the yeah. transition to other ranges, I didn't know it, but now I'm starting to learn how important yeah. it is. That's right. The the um, availability of the underhook in range four and five, stand up grappling and grappling, is a shortcut to getting destroyed on the mat. If you it gives your opponent a so we'll do a session on underhooks one day i think that'd be fantastic but a good point it transfers into the other ranges as well how many nuances there are something like a simple strike it's easy to see yeah you're right marco and it's like bruce lee said when you just start a punch is just a punch but when you get into training a punch is so much more than a punch but when you finally get it a punch is just a punch again and it's a fair comment okay so thanks guys we won't we're going to have a keep it short for the next few weeks in particular if we want to do little snippets and short videos uh we've trained twice today and i've got three more sessions today so i'm conserving my energy as much as i can uh because you know i turn 45 next week and i've got to be careful
He turns 46 next birthday. Yeah, uh -huh. But anyway, uh, thanks, guys. Nice short session. I hope you get something out of that. Three key points that will make an instant difference to your basics. Keep your head still on top of an erect spine. Retract your elbow to the spine through a relaxed shoulder and make sure that the fist turns to a horizontal plane, not an angle or an angle. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you next week. Awesome.